For centuries, psychics and mediums have attempted to pull back the dark curtain of mystery that separates the land of the living from the realm of the dead. Some claim to have successfully recorded spirit voices on electronic equipment. In 1920, Thomas Edison experimented with a device designed to pick up the voices of those beyond the grave. What were the strange sounds captured by this updated version of Edison's machine? Are we ready to establish direct communication with the spirit world? presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Man has always been frightened by the dark, troubled by the sound of echoing laughter, or hollow footsteps passing down long, empty corridors. At the S&A studios in Hollywood, California, there has been a history of occurrences that some say is beyond the realm of understanding. Many of the tales emanate from behind the massive doors of soundstage number one. Mary Pickford once acted here. Cecil B. DeMille directed. One man recreates his own astonishing story. My name is Jerry Fitzpatrick. Uh, I was the construction coordinator at this studio for approximately four years. It is one of the oldest sound stages in Hollywood. It was one particular night I remember I worked all night by myself. We had a large set to build and I was here alone laying it out. I was tired, but I remember I stepped back over in this area to take a look at what I had done. But at that time, uh, there used to be a catwalk right up here, about 15 feet off the ground, from one end of the soundstage to the other. Uh, also, at that time, there was a staircase that came from this door down to floor level. It was at approximately 2 o'clock in the morning. I heard the door open and close and footsteps coming down the catwalk. I immediately called out who's there, and the footsteps stopped. There was total silence. So I ran up the steps to check the door, and the door was bolted, like all the security doors were, and the alarm system was on. The hour was late, and I was tired, but I heard that door open and close, and footsteps coming down the catwalk. Some have suggested the theory that the dead may occasionally re-enter our own time and space. Confused by their predicament, the spirits may call out for help or attempt to communicate. Many would suggest that the strange noises in this old studio are the product of overactive imaginations, but others aren't so certain. Could spirits actually be attempting to speak to us? One man may have uncovered evidence that implies spirit communication may occur with remarkable frequency. D. Scott Rogo is the author of Phone Calls from the Dead. Well, I first heard about these cases when I first entered the field, which was close to uh, 10, 12 years ago. And I really didn't take them seriously at all. I thought they were very outlandish. It was hard for me to believe that people were actually getting phone calls from people who were dead. But as the years progressed and I did more and more investigations, I discovered that these calls were fairly common. And then I realized that there was a major effect here that someone really had to study. 
Mary Meredith of Oklahoma City recreates the night she purportedly received a phone call from the dead. Hello? Of course, I don't tell everybody about it because a lot of people still think that I'm crazy when I, they even hear about it. But I know that it was and it happened to me. Mary Meredith's case occurred in 1977. She was, uh, she had just been in the hospital. She had returned to her home, not knowing that there was a letter waiting for her, telling her that her cousin had died. She had been very close to this cousin. It was very soon after she read this letter from her mother that the phone rang, and it was from her, her cousin. It just really upset me when I got the phone call, and I, that's, I hung up on the first phone call because it upset me. But when she called back again, I said, I cannot believe that anyone would call someone and tell them that it's their cousin when my cousin is dead. I, I can't believe this. I said, and I have been sick, and I can't believe anyone would pull something on me like this. She said, but I, I know you've been sick. I was at the hospital with you. And I said, what are you talking about? And the phone started getting crackling, and then I couldn't hear her. You know, it just faded away. The idea that the dead can contact the living through electromagnetic devices is certainly not new with my research. Thomas Edison, for instance, uh, several years before his death, but became very fascinated with the idea that he could invent a machine that could bring through the voices of the dead, and even apparently made some sketches of such uh, equipment. Edison, as is well known, was extremely uh, paranoid about his ideas and kept them very, very hidden. So he never patented his ideas. But certain sketches did surface after his death, which purported to be the machine he was working on. The year is 1920. Thomas Edison is 73 years old, inventor of the light bulb, the phonograph, the motion picture camera, and countless other devices the grand old man of science focuses his genius on audio contact with the spirit world. Edison claimed his research was unfruitful, but some believe he was on the verge of success. In another laboratory, 60 years later, an inventor may be following in Edison's footsteps. Al Manning is the head of the ESP Center in Los Angeles, California. You might not expect a person with uh, a background in aerospace to be interested in spirit contact and uh, other psychic things, but it happened for me in a very practical way. I was studying uh, a big printout of figures, and uh, I knew there was a mistake on the page, not knowing where, uh, but as I ran my finger down the column, uh, I felt a buzz under it. And sure enough, when we checked that line, that was where the mistake was. This was certainly enough to kindle my interest in spirit contact in the occult, and it led to a study of uh, ritual and ceremony to enhance the contact with spirit and other magical things. As Manning's research efforts grew, he gathered around him a group interested in exploring the field of spirit contact. If they succeed, the potential rewards could be immense. Some believe that an awesome source of knowledge may become available to those able to break through the barrier that separates the living from the dead. Al Manning recreates a moment when he claims he accomplished direct contact with a spirit entity. Uh, I was sitting in meditation one day, and a spirit showed me a picture of a device, wild-looking thing, and spoke the word mica. I didn't understand it. I said, do you mean for mica? Very clearly it came back, no, mica. I don't know how it works. While photographing Al Manning's crystal device, cameras recorded a possibly strange phenomenon. 
Is it a reflection, a defect in the film emulsion, or like Thomas Edison, has Al Manning made a breakthrough of possible scientific significance? The work of Thomas Edison, both in his uh, research methods and his persistence, have always fascinated me. So when we came across partial plans for a device that he had been working on to contact spirit by, re by recording their voices, uh, we uh, thought we would try once more in this area. Uh, we have done other things in the past unsuccessfully. And I don't know if this one is going to work, but uh, we're going to use the old home recorder for the cone particularly, along with an extra long antenna with flashing lights in hopes of attracting the local spirits to us so that they can participate in recording the voices. What explanation is there for the remarkable sounds recorded through Al Manning's machine late at night in the graveyard? In an old cemetery in Sierra Madre, California, members of the Orange County Society of Psychic Research have gathered to try some unusual experiments. On this day, various electronic devices will be tested for their ability to contact the dead. Harry Shepard directs the group. We are feeling for vibrations from the various markers. You can feel the outline of the spirit, and when they're there, you can just sense it. And this is the way we determine the best area to do the spirit voice recordings. I get a sinking feeling here, and the child on the other side, I get a pulling over there. It's just like uh, shots of electricity are coming out of the ends of your fingers, you mm -hmm. know, and on the snow. It's cold, too, the snow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's two yeah. very, very strong entities right in this area. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you feel I like it right in coming from the other well, Later, well, I like right, it. Right yeah. But in yeah. other parts, it was cold. This one here, feel this one here, Dick. This right would in, be right a in very good spot yeah. to, to tape, right in here. Well, that is. That's different. Isn't it? Sight is yeah. a little cooler. It's even different. It has places. so many great locations now. Yeah. <laughs> this place is fantastic. Mm -hmm. The cemetery is good. one of the best in the area. As the group gathered psychic impressions, Technicians began setting up a battery of recording equipment. Okay, we'll be going just after dark. Took your levels. Okay. Microphones and cable were strung out to areas that attracted the psychics. Fresh recording tape was carefully loaded into each machine and labeled. Now that the sun is set and it's dark here, you're always reminded that you wonder what kind of spirits you might run into in a graveyard. But it feels comfortable here, so let's see how it all comes out. Over here, we have our updated version of the Edison machine. Uh, we've incorporated the crystal because it gave us an interesting auric manifestation before. And this wire leads to the antenna with the flashing lights. And behind us are the tape recorders in case we get some sounds that we'll need a serious analysis later. Why don't we uh, try to get into a, a very relaxed state. Uh, everybody close your eyes and just breathe normally and let that beautiful relaxed feeling start to flow down your face, down your arms, down to your legs and out your feet and go receptive go receptive with every breath you take if there's any spirit entities here that would like to communicate with us we have three microphones mounted on this pedestal you may speak into any of these three microphones or you may rap on them for a yes or no answer. How long have you been in spirit world? Is there anyone on earth that you would like us to deliver a message to for you? Is there anything that we can do? The questions continued all night. 
When the session was over, more than 5,000 feet of tape had passed through the recorders. Thank you for your cooperation. The following weeks were spent analyzing the sounds recorded at the graveyard. Technician John Kawamoto spent over 30 hours noting the dozens of unusual sounds on the tapes. When his log was complete, the psychics were invited to listen to the tapes and interpret what they heard. You ready? What is that? What's right there? I know. What is that? Whoa. That's a growling. Yeah. Are you ready? Remember that one tape that we got before that had that real weird voicing in it, that, that uh, real bad sounding voice? Mm -hmm. That sounds similar to a dick. Very, very similar to that one. Right. Remember we did that about three years ago and we got that rrrr sound? Oh, and there's that. Yeah, that, right. Right. Yeah, that is a beautiful one. Okay, now that we listen to the microphones, let's take a look at the telephone and see what we see. We got some fantastic stuff earlier. Let's see what we have here. If there's any spirits here, we now have this telephone with us that is attached to this microphone and at this tape recorder through here. And you can use this now, if you wish, with the other microphones to communicate with us. Can you hear me? That's loud. That's a yeah, very that loud clear. Yeah, With normal speed, we'll hear a, uh, the clicking. And if we slow it down to uh, 16th or 1 16th of the speed, it slows the voice way down and we can stretch it out and hear the syllables in it instead of just a click or a pop sound. That's right, because a lot of times when we slow it down, we can hear a word that normally you couldn't hear you at normal speed. Right. 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 Okay, this is slowed down to uh, 16 times, or we'll try it and see what happens. Okay. Can you hear me? Wow. Okay, I, I just went back. I'll go forward again. Yeah. Yeah. What? No. It's, it's definitely two words. Sound like yeah. it sounds like it said listen that time. It's the same. Two different voices. Help me. Help well, that me was backwards. really clear. That was really clear backwards. Now, it, and listen was forward, right? Uh-huh. It's an... sound quality mm -hmm. of it was very, very mm -hmm. good. And I think, too, the importance is slowing the tape, tape and speeding down. that. Something that you think is just a pop, mm -hmm. you know, in this sort of taping can turn out to be all kinds of things. Now let's see how we did with the Edison machine. I think yeah, let's go idea. do yeah, Let's okay. see what the Edison machine shows us. <laughs> get it going. To our spirit friends, would you please direct your answers into the horn so that we can record them readily? Are you happy where you are now? Do you like this form of communications? Do you have any suggestions for improving our equipment for easier communication with you? Would you prefer that we turn off the blinking lights? It's Thomas Edison with you. Can we slow that? Oh, listen, right that there. Down and listen to okay. it. Yeah. That's right where that, that humming started, right that, there when you turned the, the lights off. It sounds like singing or, yeah. or something, yeah. The slower and might it was be. just when the lights got turned on, hmm. right? You want it slow. Yeah, 16, let's do it at the 16th speed. This is the humming it's like It's like a lot of activity or something centered right inside. What did I have to sound like? An energy uh, vortex. 
like an energy yeah. vortex in That's there. what I'm saying. It's like a, it's like a center yeah, of energy. It's a dynamo, vortex. I tell you. This is <laughs> <laughs> it's a good machine. It's a dynamo working. Interesting. It's a, yeah. Let me, is there any way that that machine could have been creating that type of sound from the inside? No, the machine wouldn't create it from the inside, but that horn will really focus the energy so that when the spirit would direct the energy into the horn, you'd get that kind of a manifestation. Okay, but there's not any kind of way that from inside, like by, because yeah. of whirling or the machinery is, or something? Yeah, nothing that, is moving in there. Then oh, the man, horn that's is perfectly really still. interesting. Yeah, there, there was nothing connected. It's energy in a oh, vortex oh. right there. Mm -hmm. in the, which While the pops, it. squeaks, and whines recorded at the graveyard may not constitute hard evidence of spirit contact, Harry has a suggestion for those who doubt his work. If people are a bit skeptical, if they would try it themselves at least once, then there's a very good chance that they would get something on tape themselves, if they do it with an open mind. Will we ever have a major breakthrough in the field of spirit voice contact? Just as many of us are interested in trying to establish contact with the dead, the dead might be just as interested in contacting the living. Phone calls from the dead, cases of voices that appear on electronic recording equipment, and other similar manifestations might be the successful result of active experimentation on the other side to make contact with the living. There may come a day in the very distant future when contact with the dead is an everyday occurrence. But the major breakthrough leading to this result might actually be due to experiments produced by scientists on the other side and not through any attempts by us on this side of death. Lost civilizations, extraterrestrials, myths and monsters, missing persons, magic and witchcraft unexplained phenomena. In search of cameras are traveling the world, seeking out these great mysteries. This program was the result of the work of scientists, researchers, and a group of highly skilled technicians. <laughs>